them things are everywhere around here. Man! This uh, corn spray today, you can see right here, it's about knee high. And then we get certain spots here where it's waist high, and that's fun to spray. Um, I think what we're going to do is we are going to work on the sprayer this winter and make an adjustable height boom so I can adjust it on the go. I'm going to get some uh, square tubing, a hydraulic cylinder, I'm going to make it so I can raise it up and down, try and get it so I can uh, move it like up and down three, four feet maybe. Try and get, oh, I ran over some corn there. Try and get it so uh, in the spring I can set it really close to the ground and then make it so I can come back through around this time and raise it up just a smidge. So, so yeah, getting this uh, last cornfield sprayed. And then I'll get the sprayer full. Hopefully spray my beans tonight after the wind dies down. Now this field, I'm back here in the valley, so it's not very windy, but once you get back out of this valley, it's pretty windy, so I know over on the rental ground that last bean field up there, it's going to be windy. So, so yeah. That's what we're doing today. Getting her done. It's about the last I can go through it before I can snap and stocks. Like this here is almost waist high. So yeah, the old knee high by the 4th of July, man. We're uh, ahead of the game so far, but you can see we're getting some weeds down in there so I'll get this sprayed and hopefully it grows like crazy. Uh, it is currently 92 degrees and humid as crazy. Not very pleasant outside but yeah it is what it is. And there's where I missed some winter eye. And see how the corn does. If you uh, planted the winter eye and let it grow, it definitely uh, slowed it down a little bit. But when you have two crops competing for water and the winter eye is that far ahead of the corn, you're going to have that. If it would have been two crops planted at the same time, I bet you it would have been a whole different story. So. So yeah, anyhow, I get this all sprayed, it's Friday, then I need to go in and call Digger's Hotline, I need to have a mark my back fence so I can set another wood post, uh, I don't know if you guys, see I've got a couple wood posts set along the edge of this cornfield, so I can uh, redo this fence so it's set up for the way I have this cornfield. It's all, these are all full rows. There's no half rows because you can see up there, um, if I were to plant tight to the woods, I'd have about eight, 10, 12 short rows at this end of the field. I don't like short rows if I don't have to. So I laid it all with the corn planter so that I can run a wire back along there. And then at the other end, it stops in my waterway that meets that waterway so I can throw up a poly wire at the end of this cornfield and I could graze that hay field and then get the cows to get back here and graze these woods. Uh, as I've been thinning them, I've been spreading grass seed and there's grass growing in there. So trying to make it so there's more options. But so yeah, anyhow, this cornfield back here, once we plant the winter rye, trying to think of uh, something else I can plant with the winter eye to make some uh, nitrogen before next year and I haven't decided if I'm gonna try hairy veg or, or just what I'm gonna do um, 
This will be grazed this fall, the winter eye. So I don't really know what to put with it. Medium red clover. Um, I don't know. So that's kind of spending time in the tractor spraying and thinking. We all know how that goes. Try and pick the right row here, which I probably didn't. But, no, nah, I picked the right row. But anyhow, so yeah, that's what we're getting done today. The cows were just out here and they went back to the shed. Apparently it's too hot for them, which I don't blame them. I'm surprised they don't go hide up in the trees. I think it'd be better than the shed, but I don't know. I'm not a cow, so I don't know. But, yeah, you can see that, uh, grass growing in there. That's uh, foxtail, I do believe. So we'll uh, knock it out. This corn is pretty much canopied. I would say by the end of next week it'll be canopied, so our weed battle should be over. But they are uh, covering my little field on the corner, which was in the past here. They're covering that with liquid manure right now. So, one of these days I need to get over there and get that fence too. That's yes, we're gonna hopefully get one more cutting of hay off of that. The winter eye, you guys can kind of see, is starting to turn pretty quick. So, after we uh, get the winter eye harvested, I'm gonna burn down that little field over there. It's about three acres what I'm taking back out. The field is between three and a half to four acres total. So obviously some of it, about an acre of it or so, will be staying for the cows to graze. And then that'll give me room around the around the woods there. And then I can get around the tractor or pick up or whatever in the past year. So once we get the winter rye harvested we'll uh, spray that field and then we'll plant that for winter rye. Then I'll replant that one to fall graze. So yeah, that's just some plans, some ideas what's gonna be coming up here. So, but I gotta get get my uh, thing done with Digger's Hotline saying come out and mark that. You can see one post right there, and there's another post right up there. I have that one set in the waterway that runs over that one, so it'll be perfect to run a poly wire down there. So I can uh, graze that pasture after second cutting, or that hay field after second cutting, because yeah, I have more cows than I have available pasture really for their needs. So I have to try and make it so I can uh, graze hay fields late summer. But I'll probably end up fencing around that front field too. So I can always graze that one later on. And then the rental ground over there, if we have a year like we did two years ago where we could combine beans in September, early October, I'd like to see that, that field down for hay. So kind of getting out of the beans, I think, and stick more with the cattle. So I'm trying to get it. So the fields at home are easy to graze after haying. And then that other, that rental property, that'll be, should be able to get three to four cuttings of hay off of that. So that's kind of my thinking on that. But, so right now I've got 28 females. This will be 28 to breed next year. So. Um, you're gonna keep all them and obviously when you only have 27 acres pastured and it's wooded you ain't gonna raise enough per acre to uh, feed that many cows so we got a uh, shooting for 90 days on pasture and then then we'll graze cropland after that so yeah, that's my uh, that's my thought process. Might not be right. 
might be right, might be wrong, who knows, but anyways, so yeah, get her done.